Get in touch with your inner Bob Ross with Substance Painter's new update. Use Cloud AI to do your blender work for you and Photoshop's Remove Background tool gets supercharged. It's Motion Mondays, the non-Joey edition because even CEOs need their vacation time. Let's actually go and take a live look and see how Joey's cruise adventure is going. I'm flying. Substance Painter dropped a beefy update coming out with version 11. The highlights are automatic updates of resources. So say you're working in a Photoshop file, using it as an asset inside of Substance Painter. You can go and turn on automatic updates in Substance and whatever change you save out in that Photoshop file, it's gonna automatically update in Painter. Another update is the new fill path tool, which is one of those features that I always wondered why it didn't exist a long time ago. Previously, you weren't able to draw a path on a mesh and fill it with a color, which is kind of like not having the bucket fill tool inside of Photoshop. You can use the filled path tool to fill whatever paths you make. Now the path tool has also been updated to be more on par with the pen tool in Illustrator with new quality of life features like path preview and straight line and angle snapping. Now my personal favorite feature in the update is the stylization filter that allows you to give your models a painterly, Ghibli-esque type of look. It really makes my inner Bob Ross happy. And there's a lot more to this release and we'll be dropping a tutorial on the stylization filter soon, so stay tuned. Now onto some quick school motion updates Spring classes kick off April 7th, so whether you're wanting to learn or level up in Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, or Cinema 4D, our interactive courses are going to be the perfect thing to help you level up. Students will get the whole package. You got top level instruction, unlimited feedback on your work, round the clock access to our buzzing community, plus invites to exclusive events, and more. Seats are filling up fast, so get while the getting is good. In other news, our legendary NAB MoGraph meetup returns April 6th at Tom's Watch Bar in Vegas, baby. Grab your free tickets at MoGraphMeetup.com and you'll enjoy complimentary brews courtesy of us and our generous sponsors, including our partners at Rive. It's the perfect chance to mingle with fellow motion nerds and potentially bump into some of your industry heroes in their natural environment. It's gonna be a blast and I hope to see your face there. Nomad Sculpt, a popular mobile tablet-based 3D sculpting app, has been teasing some pretty cool new features coming to Nomad Sculpt 2.0 that look like they're adding some kind of Cinema 4D-ish cloner and effector-like features. In a tweet, the Nomad developer shared both a repeater node and a randomizer effect that allows you to clone an object along a path, make it all spirally, and then randomize the placement and position of those objects. In another tweet, user Nico Gita showed off a classic cloner-like ability to clone in a grid and add randomization. Now, all this stuff is super exciting, and you can grab Nomad Sculpt on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store right now for a one-time fee of $19.99. Here at School of Motion, we're always looking at the ways that AI can be used to help assist artists rather than replace them. And Blender MCP is a very interesting AI tool that basically allows you to control Blender using Claude prompts. So the example from the creator shows how you can use a 2D reference image and you can craft a prompt, basically telling Claude to create something in 3D. And what Claude then does is generates a bunch of Python commands that tells Blender exactly what to do step by step. While this does kind of seem impressive at first glance, it can kind of be hit or miss as Blender Guru kind of demonstrates in his video. As he says, it's like having a low-skilled Blender intern at the ready, and maybe it helps block out the scene for you while you then go in and add all the finer details afterwards. As with most AI, the more expertise the artist brings to it, the better the AI will do, such as suggesting better ways to create an object, like maybe it's using geometry nodes to clone a bunch of trees versus manually placing them. And speaking of geometry nodes, I feel like this workflow would actually be helpful in those type of specific areas in your workflow versus doing everything. So imagine if you wanted to create a really cool Ghibli style painterly material from scratch and you told Claude, hey, help me generate a material node setup just for that. And it can generate all the nodes and voila, you have a solid base for a shader. 
Or if you wanted to go in something more technical and have it help you create an Unreal Engine blueprint. Now that's when it can get pretty interesting. It is pretty early on, but again, this is the worst it's ever gonna be, but it is an interesting look into how we can use AI and have it be directly integrated in the apps we know and love. Now, if you wanna learn Blender and then prove the mastery of it to your robot overlords, check out our latest course, Blender for 3D Artists, available now at schoolofmotion.com. And speaking of automating workflows with AI, last week was GDC, the Game Developer Conference, where everyone shows off cool gaming-based tech. We actually discovered this cool nugget from Sino Lai, a technical artist at Adobe Substance, where he shows off Substance Automation, a command line toolkit that helps automate Substance Designer and Painter workflows. Previously, this was only really shown in theory and in papers, but this demo shows how it can enhance many workflows and not only can be applied to game design, but motion graphic workflows as well. And he actually goes through using Substance Designer to create first the overall style of the game, and then use a sampler in Firefly to generate pattern variations, and then uses that result to generate parametric materials that you can then use and edit directly inside of Unreal Engine. It's pretty awesome. And then he goes to show how you can use substance automation to even generate 3D assets, and then shows another instance where you can easily change the entire look of the textures across all the gaming assets all at once. This looks like a pretty massive thing and it'll be interesting to see how this is implemented in the future. Maybe someday we'll have a single person generating an entire game, just like we saw the director of Flow create his own movies by himself. All right, now to give some props to some amazing work. First up, Doug Alberts and his Noodle Studio just did a beautiful piece for Hatch, which is a full featured alarm clock where Noodle not only created the promo video for it, but designed the in-app experience, which was a first for the studio. While the promo video itself demonstrates product rendering at its best, using motivated, colorful lighting, abstract compositions, and expressive movements, the UI design and the button animations are super clean. Now on their website, they have a great breakdown of their whole entire process, mentioning that they utilize Lottie and Rive to help create the interface. It's a really great example of how motion studios can go beyond just making animations of a product, but can then parlay those skills into designing the entire interface for the actual product itself. If you wanna learn more about how Doug Alberts does his thing, check out his breakdown on his website, but also be sure to check out his workshop that he did with us over at School of Motion. And if you wanna learn Rive, definitely check out our Rive Academy course as well. Now for this next piece, I wanted to highlight how motion studios are leveraging AI, again, not to replace artists, but to augment the artist's ability. Vitor Tiexera, senior designer at Not Real, shares some cool experiments using Comfy UI and Krea tools using LoRa. Now LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaption, and when I had it explained to me like I was five, basically it allows you to train an AI model for specific uses and specializations, like taking a 3D render and matching a previous style. So this shows you how artists and studios can train their own AI on their own previous work in order to quickly iterate and speed up the R&D process. And I'd be interested to know how you're utilizing AI in your workflow, so let us know in the comments about what you're actually finding moves the needle in your own work. All right, RIP Photo Bombers, the new Photoshop beta added some crazy improvements to the Remove Background tool that improves a ton on where the old version would have had issues like on fine details details like wires and netting. The demos that Adobe posted are pretty impressive, demonstrating how much better this model works with more complex subjects. Yeah, sure, it can remove backgrounds, but can it remove the existential dread I feel in the back of my brain when I have to UV unwrap something? I doubt it. Now from the makers who brought you Quixel Mega Scans comes Dash Tools 1.9, a set of tools that make world building streamlined inside of Unreal Engine. Not only can you use their asset browser for free, but through it you can access free tools from other sites like the legacy Quixel Mega Scans, Polyhaven, and yes, Fab. Dash also makes their own tools that makes world building a lot easier, like their fast terrain and water tools, powerful material mixer, fog cards, and a whole lot more. And their AI-driven asset management system is a big improvement over Unreal Engine's native asset browser system. Our very own Aaron Rabinowitz has been using it for his world building in Unreal and absolutely loves it for all the tools and assets it provides. 
Head on over to their website to learn more. And if you've been wanting to learn Unreal Engine for yourself and harness the power of real time, check out our Unreal Engine for 3D artists taught by the Unreal GOAT himself, Jonathan Winbush. Now on to our student of the week. And that student is, insert drum roll, sound effects. Samuel Bermudez, who created a really slick rendition of After Effects Kickstart's epic lyric Smackdown. Now you're gonna wanna turn your sound up for this one. Yeah, I got a mad you can track. Key phrase on the attack. You need a pick up the handle. All of the layers are stack. I'm animating on tools. You know I render and cues and color call all of my layers. So nobody's confused. Watch that timeline shine. I'll make a motion design. No copilot, I'm flying solo. Cause all of my plugins are fine. <laughs> Now, I really love the use of all the fonts, and the movement definitely matches the energy of that music track. You love to see artists who can show off their expertise in, say, another area like type design, and then stack another skill like animation on top of it to really make their designs come to life through motion. Awesome job, Samuel. And if you want to learn more about After Effects Kickstart, head on over to schoolmotion.com. And lastly, we are quinning over Peter Quinn's new plugin for After Effects that shows you safe areas on social media posts inside of After Effects comp window. You can quickly toggle between TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube safe zones because we wouldn't want your dope TikTok dance videos to be cut off at the edges, now would you? And that wraps up another riveting episode of Motion Mondays. Remember that spring registration is open now for our April 7th classes, so be sure to sign up before it is too late. And if you're headed to NAB, be sure to grab your free tickets to the MoGraph meetup on April 6th at Tom's Watch Bar. Yours truly will be on hand to help you find the best craft beer and then tell you where you can find cracked versions of Blender. Shh. All right, smash that subscribe button because it's the only way YouTube knows you exist. And it's the only way you don't miss any news, interviews, or tutorials on our channel. And remember, you can find all the links to all the stories we mentioned in this video in the description right below. And Joey should be back next week, unless, of course, his cruise ship hit an iceberg, which in that case, don't let go, Joey. Don't let go.